Hey guys, welcome back to this week's video. Another awesome Rory Exploratory where this week we are at Village Point Park in Daphne, Alabama. So this is a park here with a lot of um, very, very rich tradition and we're going to be checking out some pretty cool things along the way. So welcome back. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you guys enjoy. So please bear with me as I'm trying this out. Uh, I've got my notes with me. I've also got Leo with me. So it's going to be a bit of a, an adventure trying to get all this um, in one. So basically Village Point Park is, uh, Village Point Park Preserve is on the eastern shore of Mobile Bay in Alabama. And there's a lot of history here because of the evidence that's been found in the area. You've got, um, I think it's, let's see here, Spanish, French, and English people that has been discovered in the park area. Um, also the Native Americans as well. So a lot of really, really ancient stuff on these lands. Um, you've got basically wetlands, you've got um, historic trees that are hundreds of years old. Um, there's a cemetery that we're gonna be checking out. And uh, first stop along the way is actually gonna be Jackson's Oak, which is a um, huge oak tree. And we'll be showing you that guys that in just a minute. So let's go for a walk. Very peaceful and quiet trails as we walk along here. Nobody really out this morning, which is nice. Leo's definitely enjoying himself, right, bud? But yeah, just uh, as you kind of walk through the trees and you think about how many generations of people have made their home here and really kind of lived in this area. It's just kind of neat to think about. Let's check out this plaque here. So we've got invasive exotic plants. Ooh. Kudzu, got plenty of that. Chinese privet. But yeah, there's a bunch of plants. So if you're a plant person, um, I'm not much of a plant person, but there's a bunch of plants around here. So if you're into plants, come check out all the, all the cool ones we have down here. All right, so our first stop along the way is Jackson's Oak. This is a 95 foot live oak, which is actually uh, one of the largest live oaks in Alabama. So this has been a historic landmark uh, since the 18th century and is actually shown as a survey line marker in the original Spanish land grant survey map of 1787. So why is it Jackson's Oak? Let's just ask that. So according to local traditions, General Andrew Jackson made a speech to his army from one of its massive limbs while he was en route from Pensacola during the War of 1812. Protection and preservation of this magnificent live oak is a top priority of the city of Daphne and the Village Point Foundation. An observation platform was carefully constructed around the tree, which I am on now, to offer an excellent view and to provide protection from pedestrian traffic, which research has shown would eventually compact and erode the soil, causing root damage to the tree. So that's really awesome to think about in 1787. So this is a tree that's older than me obviously but older than most people and events and all kinds of things to think about the traditions of generations of people again that have seen this tree and walked past it and um possibly even andrew jackson himself rallying his troops from one of these massive limbs that you see right here very neat to think about you think about the way things are in our country right now, such disagreement and division, and then you look at nature and you think about this tree and how it survived so much wars and stock market collapse and world wars and everything. It's, it's, it's still standing. It's still here. It's still something that someone can come and look at and, and really appreciate the tradition and the history of it. Really the contrast between how slow moving things in nature are and how you know almost permanent they are compared to things that come and go and new shiny things that come out every day and really this tree is still going to be here this jackson jackson's oak very very awesome uh, it's 28 feet in diameter so quite a large tree it's awesome so behind me is the doll of cemetery the burial site here dates back to the 1800s and the Dalla family is one of the oldest families in 
uh, Baldwin County and definitely in Daphne. So we'll, we'll kind of explore here and look at some of these grave sites and I'll give you all some more uh, interesting facts and details. But very, very peaceful little spot. Very secluded. A lot of loblolly pines in this area that make the floor a very quiet, um, easily traversable area. And uh, it's a little bit higher. It's kind of in the heart of a village park preserve here, but it's a little higher up. So no worries of flooding or uh, anything like that. But let's go and we'll check out some more of the graves. So the entirety of the Doll of Cemetery here is actually an acre. Uh, the family section, which is you see some of in front of me here, was originally surrounded by a wrought iron fence with a gate bearing the family name. Uh, I'm guessing the gate would be somewhere up here, uh, kind of where you see these entrance you see some stones that are still up there by the entrance let's see it's unknown how many people were actually buried in the cemetery as many are unmarked the fence and gate were stolen years ago and birth records actually show uh, louis's birth as february 15th 1773 and not 1769 as the marker says here but there's several graves that are marked, and the grave, the uh, dates on them, you've got inscriptions in French, and the dates on them are very old. You've got um, one here, 1799, 1872. Um, this, the saddest, uh, uh, I think, of all these gra marked graves is this one here, the unknown infant. I always kind of, every time I walk by, it always kind of strikes a chord with me, just an, a random unknown infant. But very, very cool to see all these really old sites and to think what, what was life like in the eastern shore of Mobile Bay in the 1850s when these, you know, 1820s to 1850s when most of these people were alive. Is it, was it the same as, as it is now or massively different? Here we have the oldest marked grave in this, in this burial area. It is the grave of Mary Blue, the wife of Uriah Blue, who was a neighbor of the Dollar family. Uriah Blue was major, actually Ma Major Uriah Blue, an officer who served with Andrew, General Andrew Jackson. Uriah was born in Kentucky about 1776 and married Mary in about 1818. When they married, he was 42 and she was 28. In 1820, he resigned his commission and relocated to Baldwin County, or his campaign had brought him during the Creek Indian War. Their home was built along the bluff just south of, of the Dollif Plantation, which is a little ways from here. But the, uh, this is the oldest grave, oldest marked grave in this, in this entire cemetery. So, let's see, all of these are, several of these are unmarked. Leo is, uh, has no respect here. A lot of these are unmarked, but you've got several that are marked. So you can at least glean some history from the area. So some background on the Dolive family. Um, Dominique Dolive was the original. He came from British-ruled France, uh, Toulouse, France, to Mobile in about 1770, 1771, somewhere in there. Came to the area at about the age of 31 and lived on a plantation with his future father-in-law, where he raised and harvested, raised cattle and harvested. Um, he did that for a little while and then actually bought his own land here, uh, invested in his own land. He never lived on that land, but did receive the Spanish land grant for the Eastern Shore property in 1787. So at that point, let's see here, his family spent some summer months at the plantation. Uh, Dominique acquired more land as it became available in the area. His oldest son, so upon uh, Dominique's death, uh, they I don't have the date for it, I'm sorry. His oldest son, Louis, took over managing the family plantation, and Louis actually built a hotel there, La Belle Rose, which is not there now, but you can the, the site is still there. And there were about 1,200 acres that they had accumulated by that time. So just kind of came over and made a started making a, a plot for himself. Very interesting. As we get into this part of the park, you'll notice that there are raised walkways, and this kind of just shows off some of the wetlands areas. In different times of the year, you'll possibly see some alligators down in these little areas hanging out. So definitely caution is recommended. Um, we're coming up on one of my favorite parts of the actual park as you proceed more towards the south. And I'll show you guys that in just a minute. 
So this is probably the most surprising part. As you get to the end of the heavily wooded area, it just dumps out onto beautiful Mobile Bay with quite a scenic view. Um, today it's a little bit chilly, but it's still a beautiful view nonetheless. And you can feel the, or hear the wind probably uh, whipping up, and I apologize for the audio here, but just wanted to show you guys the end of this park is coming right out onto Mobile Bay where uh, it feeds in on the, what, this side is the eastern side, the eastern shore. Over um, down there, you can see downtown Mobile and uh, all the buildings and all the shipyards. And uh, this, is, this is the area here. So thank you all for coming on this journey with me. I hope you enjoyed viewing Village Point Park in Daphne, Alabama. And please like the video, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more awesome content from Rory Exploratory, we're going to be dropping videos pretty much weekly to check out some pretty awesome places like this one. So thank you all again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.